Hey everybody, today uh, we are looking at the almost final version of the front suspension of the Challenger. As you can see here, uh, the front suspension bridge has been finished. Uh, it's a completely different version than last time. Uh, this time, let me take this off. Uh, this time we have no movement at all. This is absolutely solid. It's as as stiff as one can make from Lego. Let me take this wheel off as well. The noise that you can see, you can hear are those uh, rubber uh, inserts in the in the Lego Bionicle connectors. Uh, I have sanded down the ball joints a little bit uh, and looped uh, the insides, but uh, I guess I'll have to live with the noise. Uh, come on. Let's take this off. Okay, yeah, that's a lot smoother. You can also see how the enter, enter row bar works, how the energy is transferred all the way to the other side. Of course, this suspension also has uh, Ackerman geometry, and you will notice that uh, when looked from above, the steering link is uh, slightly angled towards the rear of the car. It's of course parallel to the uh, rear suspension link uh, in both planes, from viewed from the top and uh, from the front uh, and this essentially gives the car an Ackerman geometry and go, just a quick recap, rec recap what Ackerman is uh, the point is that the outer wheel uh, describes a larger circle than the inner wheel so the outer, outer wheel needs to deflect a lot less than the inner wheel in order to describe the, uh, to, to, to negotiate a corner. That's uh, accomplished by, by angling uh, the steering a little. Uh, it's really just a simple trick seen in most cars, but it's obvious here uh, because uh, both links are angled. Um, okay, this is from the bottom. Now let's see how this looks up front. Uh, we weren't able to see this view the last time because uh, the camera was just too close to the, to the suspension. But you can see here that uh, the steering rack is uh, very uh, low. I managed to squeeze it just into a height of two studs, uh, which is nice because uh, this way, uh, this way we can mount the engine uh, as low as possible. And uh, in suspension setups like this, you has you have basically two options. You can do it like in I did in the Mustang, where you have the steering rack uh, high above. Uh, this way you have to. Uh, basically position the engine behind the steering rack and the engine needs to be much further uh, to the center of the car than it's uh, the case in real life. Uh, here in, in our car, in the Challenger, the engine will actually be just 
on the front axle, like in in the real Challenger. Uh, you can see the evolution, of course, here uh, of the upper links, of the upper wishbones. Um, I think it looks really nice, and uh, the both the suspension bridge, the uh, st steering rack, and the anti roba link, the anti roba bar, uh, are uh, in the same plane as low as possible so that there's plenty of room for whatever engine we are going to put inside. Um, I have no idea what I, I'm going to do with uh, the uh, body of the car yet. This is also just a placeholder for now. Uh, the next, because the next thing I will tackle is the rear suspension. Uh, I want to have both uh, suspension bridges done uh, so I can then approach the the bodywork, uh, or not not just the bodywork, but uh, the bo the car um, the chassis. Uh, but what I will do here is that now once I have uh, both uh, suspension bridges, I will uh, address the design of the car first before I do any structural work. I want to have the design of the car finished. So I can then uh, put the design, uh, design the chassis according to the design, which is of course what uh, most car manufacturers do. But my approach so far was always the other way around. Uh, just in, like in the E30, uh, I designed the chassis first and then tried to squeeze whatever design uh, the E30 has onto the chassis. Uh, this time I will go design first and everything else second. So uh, basically the front and rear suspension will just be rolling blocks on which uh, the design uh, skeleton will be put without any me putting in any uh, superstructure or whatever, any supports. Just I want to just nail down the approximate design of the Challenger and this will not be a scale car uh, I want the car to look like a, like the Challenger but I will not uh, aim I'm not aiming for perfect uh, for a perfect scale uh, I will not go with blue blueprints uh, but basically just uh, feel this worked best for me in the past with my supercars and uh, I think this time I should really excel at it with the new panels. We, we shall see. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy the pictures that I'm putting in the description. And please don't forget uh, the E30 competition. Uh, the E30 competition uh, ends at the end of the month. If you haven't started working on the design of the car you should do not, you should do so now it's only a few weeks left uh, next time uh, I will have those uh, hubs printed and we are going to start with the design of the rear suspension which of course is also going to be multi-link uh, it's going to have five links per wheel so it's going to be even more complicated and of course we need to design a differential uh, which is going to take the power of the engines. So with this I'm leaving you till next time. Oh and before I forget it, uh, please uh, like the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you.